Cisco Live is all about community. That's why we're here. Like, we don't just build the DevNet zone and all these things for ourselves. I mean, it's fun. We have a good time being here. But uh, being at this event is all about the people walking around right here off camera that most everyone can't see. Um, and I'm here with Shweta, a good friend of mine. Um, and we're, what I really want to talk about with you today is the idea of being not just an employee at Cisco, being in different roles, being a developer is really about the work that you do to develop things. But it's also about talking to other people to learn how to do that development work better. Um, you know, previously you were um, in DevNet itself and now you work with Meraki and you do a lot of product stuff with Meraki for APIs and the experience people have working with those. And so I'm really curious for you, in your whole history of working for Cisco, being in DevNet, being around DevNet, being at Meraki, as a developer, what is it like to actually think about using these tools? And now on the other side, how to think about like, adjusting and modifying and like evolving those tools to help the people that are here. Yeah, so it's interesting, right? Um, I started my career being a developer first, and then when I was a developer, I used to work on the APIs, the programmability, programmability side of it, and that's when I got to understand, like, from a developer's perspective, what is something that I actually need? What was the what were the ways in which I was struggling? Made me learning how to get started or finding the right tools or knowing how can I troubleshoot this error or maybe just looking out or seeking help in community forums to get to know how can I build this use case or has anyone done the same thing that I have, I'm trying to do and then getting help on those sorts of things. So from being in that role of a developer then I transitioned to being a developer advocate which was exactly coming on the other side of the role and then now that I know okay this is these are some of the really basic like you know developers just want I would say Say two things. First, they want to know what exists, and then secondly, once they know that okay, these are the tools that exist, how can I make the most of them? How can I leverage it so that I can make my job easier? So now, being from a developer advocate and then transitioning to the product management side, I think it makes like um, I feel like coming full circle because now being on the PM side of things, I can now try to put on the lens of a de developer and really understand what they want and then build and ship tools that will suffice their use cases. So for example, I would say the most uh, common things that we heard, hear from the developers is like, tell me, give me learning guides or uh, give me some step-by-step -step ways on how I can break down this really complex issue and it will help me to onboard uh, any of the APIs or any of the new developer tools really easily. So we see that the, the developers want to adopt, but how can we make that adoption path easier for them? So that's what I think it's uh, one of the main focus and I'm really passionate, passionate about building those kind of tools and that can be in form of guides, code samples or videos or you know even giving talks like for what we do in the DevNet zone here in Cisco Live. You know, it's, it's interesting. I love hearing all the different ways that you can take in input. So I, I'm really curious. So someone's an attendee here. They're walking around and you know you mentioned taking input and or feedback, thoughts, whatever it is from, the, from a community member or from a kind of a, an aggregated set of people to say, I think this is what people really want. Here's how we're gonna either implement that into the product or make decisions about how that could influence the roadmap for something. Um, if I was, or if you were a member of the community here walking around attending a session, what are ways that they may not be aware of that they're either, because if you're not going to a form and saying, here is my piece of feedback, that's an obvious one. But if you're not, if that person isn't doing this, as a product manager who's thinking about what do developers actually need, what's actually going to help them, how are you gathering what you'll call feedback or input from a community member if they're not directly submitting it? Like, how, what are ways, because I, I think it'd be really interesting for, for anybody watching the video right now who, uh, that didn't get to attend to get a better sense of like, how are you actually gaining that input if they're not giving it to you directly, so right. to speak? Yeah, that, that's an excellent question and I'm glad you asked because I would say that as a PM, our ears are always open to feedback and this is what we're actually craving for. Just give us feedback because that like data driven decisions it's what the whole roadmap is based on so i would say anyone who, who is walking around in the devnet zone or in in any part of the cisco live um, let's say first of all attend the sessions uh, make sure that you are aware of what different type of sessions are being offered so that you can select that okay this is a concept which i'm really interested in, or this aligns really well with the tools or things i'm working on and when you attend that session the speaker who is presenting that session 
high chance that they are part of the PM team or someone who knows the PM team in some way. So get in touch with the speaker. That's uh, I would say highly highly recommended. Uh, we have certain booths, uh, for example, dedicated to Meraki or DNA spaces or anything. Or we have a booth called Shared Experiences where people can come in, and we have people representing different teams over there. And they, that's I would say it's the best way to interact directly in person because uh, you know conference is a way in uh, gives you an opportunity to be and meet the person in uh, in physical aspect. So I think that's like a really fast and good way of giving feedback. Um, the other thing I would say is if you're not present here physically, engage in the community forums that we have out there. I would say the DevNet community forums, the Meraki ones, they are very active. People are always posting and getting responses uh, quite quickly. So I would say that's also the second best alternative if you're not attending in person. Uh, so yeah. yeah, that's a really good point. I, you know, I think so often a community, I'm going to say a community member, but that's how I identify somebody, it, how I identify somebody, the way that I think about it. But if you are a member of the community or you self-identify as being a member of the Cisco community or the DevNet community, you know, you might, or a person might seem to think, I, I go to a support forum, so community.cisco.com, plethora of places from Meraki to DevNet to any other product Cisco has to ask for help, check for help, look for information. Um, and I, so often we think of those as support forms, but they're they're one of the best places that, as folks who work at Cisco, we can go to to say, what are people commonly talking about? What are the topics that are coming up that seem to be like, well, a lot of people are asking this. Maybe that's something we need to really think about. It's not the only place though that we can find that information. You know, whether it's social media, places like Reddit and Stack Overflow, that I don't know that a lot of folks realize that we can just go look at and say, what are some common trends by looking on those? And it's. It's such an important thing that I don't know gets really thought about so often because if you're a customer or a partner, oftentimes you're not just always thinking about, oh, this is when everything works great. You're thinking about those times when things didn't go so well because that's that's the time, that's what you're gonna probably pay the most attention to. And I, I, I do wanna make sure that people understand how how much we want that input about things because it's how we make a decision about what's the next quick start guide we're gonna put out or how we're gonna revise the API document next week or do something else to improve that developer experience. And um, um, we also really want to understand what is the use case you're trying to build. Like, you know, I would say as a PM team, we really want to understand what is the job that you're trying to get done. So based on that, because it's any, any solution, I would say is use case based, right? We want to find a solution which will help you make uh, make it very easy for you to get that job done. We don't want to create a solution which will take you 10 steps to get that outcome, but rather just make us understand what's the use case that you're trying to accomplish. And we will put our creative hats on and give you the best solution possible. And I think this sort of discussions are greatly fostered in community forums, where um, there, there are so many other developers who are chiming in and sharing their use cases. So even when you're just reading a certain thread, uh, it just it will it might just might inspire you to hey I can try this I never thought about this uh, use right. case this is something which I might relate to so I think yeah the community forums are a great way to foster these sorts of discussions not just for the product team but also for the end users who are actually in the depths of creating solutions around particular technology. That's awesome. I, I really appreciate hearing that. So as we kind of wrap up, the one thing I, uh, the one last thing I really wanted to ask is outside of community.com or the Meraki forums specifically. Is there any other place that you would really guide someone who wants to give directed feedback about an experience they're having, in this case with Meraki, but kind of in general with a Cisco product? Where, where would you recommend they go to give directed feedback? Um, I would say uh, whenever, the best place I would say that whenever a user is interacting with a certain Cisco product, right? Within the particular page, there is at the footer or the header, sometimes you'll find a feedback icon. Uh, so it's like an immediate uh, thing, I would say, because you're, right now working on that page and there are a few thoughts or feedback that comes to your mind so maybe you'll think that oh i'll take it i'll make a note about it and share it later but i think the best way is to just give instant feedback so look for that button at the footer yeah. we also monitor that closely uh, you might not get a response immediately but we do keep a check and we understand when a certain feature or a use case is mostly and very frequently being asked for we understand that okay this is something which is getting a lot of eyes on so let's look into this now so i would say yeah that is that is another best option uh, make sure that you're very verbose and what you are submitting the feedback about so we exactly know that okay this is the problem or this is the particular thing that the user is requesting 
I love that. And one kind of balancing point to that comment right there is anytime you can hit that submit feedback, and I think that's a really good one for anybody who doesn't think about it often, if, especially on Cisco pages, if you see that submit feedback button, use it whenever you can. And yes, to your point, be verbose when you can. Also though, think, just because you may not have the time to be verbose doesn't mean it's not good to submit feedback. If you've got something to tell us, even in a sentence or two, it's still good feedback. All feedback is good feedback. Yeah. To your point though, you, just because you don't hear back, like we don't contact you directly, doesn't mean that it's not being absorbed. All feedback's good, we need to know about it when you look at it in aggregate and try to figure it out. Um, well listen, Shreda, thank you so much for coming. I really appreciate it. Being part of this community is, I think, why we're all here. This is what gets us up in the morning to do these things. So I really appreciate getting a chance to kind of talk about the importance of community in the product world. So thank, you. thank you for having me here. Thanks.